everyone, Paul and I Sam, welcome to part 9 of our Fujimi 116 Porsche 959 video build. Now, we've got a lot to get through today. Um, I've got the last two parts done. Uh, <laughs> nine hours of footage to make two videos, so we'll whittle them down to 30 minutes apiece. So hopefully it doesn't waffle on too long, but this is it. This is the end stretch now we're getting there. So I'm going to upload one today on Friday and the other one I'll do on Sunday morning most probably or after we've gone finished being live on Sunday I'll probably upload it. So yeah the last two parts so getting a bit nerve wracking now because some of the steps I've not been looking forward to touching the luggage compartment, the engine compartment cover, the doors and the glass. Not been looking forward to doing these at all and of all the parts I've done I think these are going to be ones that cause us trouble. So Let's jump straight in. Like I say, a lot of footage, so we're not going to hang around on every park and this is how this was masked. Here we go. I'm going to show what I need to show and we're going to move on. Before we jump into the video though, have a little listen to this. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. Make sure you click the little bell notifications, get notified of all our latest videos. Click the like button and leave a comment. I do read and reply to all the comments and appreciate everybody that takes the time to leave a comment on the channel. And of course, if you scroll up in the description, there's a link to a big long list of all the items I use in my videos. So if you see anything, you should be able to find it in there. Straight in at the deep end. So we've got the rear light lens. Um, we've masked up and painted the amber orange indicator side of the edge. Now we're going to mask off for the brake light unit. So some careful masking ready for paint. Um, we've also painted our front indicators and side repeaters as well both in Tamiya LP clear orange. All these parts are painted up in uh, semi-gloss black Tamiya and the door handles in the body colour. We've got our wing mirror, which we've painted in black, but we're, we were going to spray it, and then I thought, well, I thought bare metal foil. Let's have a look at the bare metal foil. We'll use this in a few places today. So we cut it out to size, burnish it down with the cotton bud, and then we'll cut around it with our knife like so and then round off the edges make sure it's all fully adhered and conformed and yeah that'll do the job just fine a bit quicker a little bit easier and i think it gives a better result to be honest as well now the window wipers we painted in lp5 semi-gloss black we then painted masked off and painted the blade in lp65 rubber black and then at the very end we're using our edding marker pen to add some detail to the very edge. It's not massively visible, but when you unmask it all, you can see the different tones and the different blacks. So I think a little bit of extra detail as well with adding. Sadly, our number plate decals are kaput. They are no good at all. I did have some others from my uh, 356 Porsche in the same scale, and they just didn't look right at all. So we'll pick up some aftermarket ones in part 10. Wing mirror, a little bit of um, deluxe materials glue and glaze. And we'll pop our freshly bare metal foiled mirror in there. So on the exterior part, we'll try and use say glue as little as possible. Purely down to the sheer mess it can make in a heartbeat. So yeah, use the deluxe materials. You can wipe off the excess with a moistened cotton bud and you're all good. There's our rear light lens. We've painted our red for the brake lights. Now I've noticed on uh, the Porsches that the brake light is slightly darker than the reflector. So we've got some owlclad smoke here. So the whole back middle part of that lens has been painted in LP clear red. And then we've gone over the actual just brake part of it, the brake light itself uh, in owlclad smoke. So a couple of coats of that. Let it dry, it's a lacquer. So it's lacquer on lacquer, it's no problem at all. And then once you unmask it, we'll try it up against a silver painted spoon. You can see the tonal difference there. It looks a lot, but it's just because of the light in the booth. I'm pretty happy how that's come out. Door handles were painted in the Meteor Grey. Um, wasn't going to 2K these, so we used the Mr. Hobby Super UV Cut. A couple of coats of that. Let it dry. They're all done. Now we need to mask out the outer edges of the rear light lens because that's getting painted black. So it's a case of getting our Tamiya tape, detacking it very, very carefully, putting it over the top, especially on these clear parts. They are brittle. They do break quite easily. So we're just going to put it down, burst it down with our cotton bud, then get the edges with our rounded cocktail stick. This is the right end. There we go. And we just burnish all the edges down. 
and then we'll come in with a freshly bladed knife and we'll cut it out and that will leave our center mast. So yeah, the whole outer edge of the light units on the Porsches is black. It's not too bad in this scale. Um, giving us a little bit of extra size and room to play. Um, it does pay dividends on the larger scale, that is for sure. So again, we just fold the edge of the light unit. Nice fresh blade, nice sharp knife. Just push it up against the edge and just run it back while giving a little bit of pressure to the side you're following. Cut it out, job's done. Quite simple, nice and quick. You could also use thinner tape like the Tamiya 1, 2, 3 and the Azu um, tapes as well to mask off the inners if you didn't want to do it this way. But this is the quickest and easiest way to do it. So there we go, once we're happy, make sure we're all cut right to the edges. And once we are, we peel our tape back. And there we go. Jobs are good. And once we've got the tape off, burnish the edges down again with some uh, cotton buds again. We don't want any paint bleed. And there we go. Mount it to a lollipop stick. We've masked the back off as well, so don't get any black on that. And then we can hit that with a few coats of LP5 semi-gloss black. And voila, there we go. All painted up. Now time to unmask it. Quite a satisfying but nerve-wracking part of this. It's nice to get it off, but yeah, you don't want to see any bleed through. And look, perfect. Absolutely spot on. No problems at all there. Yeah, happy with that. So get a hold of it carefully. We're masking off the back, we've just got something to grab hold of as well, which is handy while we're unmasking. Just carefully get your knife edge underneath. Grab the tape and off it comes. And look at that. Perfect demarcation. Now, again, I was going to paint the back of this and I thought, well, we've got the bare metal foil out. Let's bare metal foil it. So here we go. I'm just lining up on the sheet of bare metal foil to get a rough size. Put that safely out of the way. And then we'll put it onto the back, cut it to size, burnish it down. And that's it. That should do. Hopefully, it gives us a nice result. I've never ever done this before. But after doing it, in this, I think it'll be my permanent solution for light lenses. It worked really, really well. You could also do it the other way around. You could probably get this into the actual um, indented part of the car body where this sits uh, into the recesses. But I think this is the easier way. And I don't think it's going to make much of a difference to the overall finish. It's silver on the back. Just on a quick look, it looks. It looks absolutely spot on. So happy with that. Once we're happy with it, we grab our cotton bud again. These are the tool of the day today. Get it all burnished right up to the edges, all around the Porsche name. And then we can come in and cut off any excess. Then get our rounded edged cocktail stick. And burnish the edges fully down. There we go. Once we're happy with that, we're coming with our sharp blade again. And we'll just trim off any excess bare metal foil that we don't need. Then we'll move on to the end pieces. Like so. And there we go. There's one completed light lens. Happy how that's come out. Really nice sharp demarcations between all the clears, the silver, uh, the black. It's all come out really well. Very happy with that. That there took me about two and a half hours to do. So quite boring and monotonous. But I think the result, well worth it. There's some black um recess lines on the outside so we're hitting this with tamiya panel line wash so we're just letting it flow into all the little indents and the recesses let it dry and we'll wipe off any excess again with a cotton bud believe it or not so these are our front indicators that we've also painted in clear orange which is lp53 and we're just going around with our marker to give the impression of the rubbers they go around the edge. We've burnt metal foiled it already. And this just adds a little bit of depth to the part. Side repeaters, these little tiny parts. I've already nearly lost one uh, on a live stream the other day. So, yes, yeah, we've been very careful with these. So, these have been painted in clear orange again. We're going to burn metal foil the back. So, it's a case of sticking it to the burn metal foil, holding it down. They are pretty tricky. And just cutting along the edge. There we go, we resort to some decals, just a light bit of pressure on top. We do not want this pinging away. And we just cut the bare metal foil flush to the edges all the way around. 
And there we go, all done. We're then coming with our marker pen again. Holding it gently in the tweezers. I like to use the decal tweezers for jobs like this. They're flat, you've got much less chance of them pinging things away. But you still need to be very careful or this will ping in literally to oblivion. And it's gone forever. So like I say, nearly lost that once. So I'm not doing that again. And there we go. There's my completed rear light lens. That looks uh, very good. Nice clean paintwork. The brake light is slightly darker than the reflector. Just as in the real car. And yeah, very, very happy with that. That turned out really well. That was time well spent. Because it's quite an obvious part on the car. Now... A part, again, I've been looking forward to, but not been looking forward to. We 2K'd our body about three weeks ago. Um, so it's well and truly, truly cured. We need to flat black, flat black, flat back, and remove any of our um, dust or high spots or any imperfections in the paint. You can see there, one, two, three, four, about five dust spots on the roof, a couple on the wings, and... That is it, really, pretty clean. But we also want to remove some of the thickness of the 2K. Um, we've got 6,000, 8,000, 12,000 micro mesh, and then we've got the ultimate modeling products, polishing systems. So we've got a compound, a polish, a wax, and a detail shine spray as well. So we want to reduce the thickness of the 2K. We've got our cloths as well, very high quality micro uh, fiber cloths we sell at UMP. We want to reduce the thickness of the 2K because otherwise it can look a little bit toy like. So it's a case of going round, and with this, we'll start with the 6,000. I don't like to go any more than this, because it can put scratches into the finish that are an absolute nightmare to remove. So I try and stick at 6,000, and I just take it slow. So we put do 6,000, go over wet. Then we come with the 8,000. And again, we're just not really applying a lot of pressure. It keep it wet and moist all the time. It reduces the scratches. And just systematically go over the whole body. But we're just going to show this part. Because I don't need to show the whole thing. Because we'll be here for about three hours. Once you've done that, we'll pick up our 12. And once we've gone through all the grits and the grades, we'll have a little look at it and see what it looks like. Um, and then if you need to, you can repeat. And just keep going. This is a fine line between get rid of the dust and ruining your clear coat. Because it's easy to burn through especially on edges or raised parts and there we go so a couple of them have totally vanished there's one or two of the bigger ones still there so we'll go through the grits again starting at six thousand, and we'll work through them all until it's gone once we're happy that the dust spots have gone we'll come in with our compound we'll wet our cloth do not use the same water as you've been using for your micro mesh because you will get grit in there and just introduce more scratches and then applying the compound Add more as needed, and we're just going to buff this up to a shine. And the compound's a harsher polish, basically, and it'll remove the scratches for the majority. And there you go. Apart from that middle one, the others have totally vanished. So we will rinse and repeat on that. So we go through all the grits again, through the compound again, and then when we're happy, we're here now with the polish, given our final touches. So the whole car's been gone over with the micro mesh with the compound, and then with the polish as well. We've got rid of probably 90% of any imperfections or flaws in the paint and thinned it out in places as well. So it's looking good. It's coming up well. This is a moment that you need to really take your time on because it's so easy to burn through your paint and it really will ruin your hard work. It's almost to the point that if you're not confident doing this and you've 2K'd it, leave it alone because you'll get a good shine off the 2K obviously if you've got any imperfections they will show through so there we go all freshly polished if you look at my bench you can see my Mulder hero sign reflecting in the roof beautiful shine like i said i reckon about 90 percent of the imperfections are gone as far as i want to push them anyway without ruining all our clear coat so we'll repeat this for the doors the boot lid and the bonnet well the luggage cover as well and there we go there's all the parts done it's looking good absolutely stunning color and the Gravity 2K doing as good a job as always. So we'll pop this in its plastic case. There's the doors as well. Come out beautiful. Very happy. It's like my final inspection before I'm happily to sign it off as done. And our engine cover and boot, uh, luggage compartment lid as well. So we pop them all in here. We pop the lid on the case and we know they're all safe. 
Now, a lot of you have asked, why did I keep these on? Well, there's not a lot of strength in those A-pillars, and I knew I had a lot of polishing to do. Um, so we left them into the very last minute. We cut them off, sanded them smooth with one of our customized for 400s, because these are going to be painted black anyway. Testing our front windscreen now. So cut it off, very slowly cut through the plastic, and then cut clo as close as you can. We're not going to sand it just yet, because all we're doing is a test fit, because I was quite curious to see how well the clear parts were in this car because I thought they were going to give me a little bit of trouble and I kind of wasn't wrong. They were a little bit tricky to do, but we'll get to that in a little bit. Now we've got a whole oh, mad masking session to do that took me hours, hours and hours and hours. We've got the luggage compartment, inner seal to mask off, front windscreen, the rear window, and the engine compartment is a different colour to the rest of the body. Somebody did comment on that. Am I going to spray it the silvery colour? Yes, of course I am. But I wanted to polish the body first. So I didn't wreck any work I do over there. Um, before I'll do anything on the body work, I always polish the body up. Um, to get rid of any imperfections. And then you're not ruining paint you've already done. So we're using a mixture of Azu tape. Start with the 0.4. Then we're going up to the Tamiya. And we're just slowly masking the edges. It was a tricky job to do. This was hard. And the engine compartment was an absolute nightmare. So just take your time. Follow it round. So we're going from the 0.4 to the 1mm to the 6mm Tamiya. And that's the engine compartment. Sorry, it's not the engine. It's the luggage compartment. All done. We then do our front windscreen surround as well. So yeah, they were all cleaned up. 400 thinny sticks. Well... Customizable is cut to size, just sand it smooth, buff it back up, and like I say, once we paint it black, which is going to be done next, you won't even know those supports were there. There we go. Again, mixture of I think it was the one mil, uh, two mil, and six mil Tamiya tape, and then onto our rear screen as well. Another tricky part to do. It was a tricky one, but we got there in the end. And again, once you get the 6 mil on, that is the majority of it done. So there we go. That's some pretty tricky masking. A couple of hours work there. But time well spent. We'll now come in and infill it with some cling film or saran wrap, food wrapping, wherever you're from. So we just roll it out on the bench. We cut it. We fold it in half. Nice and simple. We use our rotary cutter. You can find it from Alpha. Digging down the back, come on, where are you? There it is. Cut it to size, and then we'll mask around all the areas we don't get any paint into, including the inside. We don't want to spray in through any vents or door gaps. And then we'll go to the spray booth, and we'll hit it with some UMP black primer. That's my favourite colour for the window rubbers. I like the look it gives. It's like a, not a satin or a matte. It's in between matte and satin. It's a matte, matte, satin, satin colour. Finishing our tape down there to ensure we're all done. Doors next. Like I say, a lot of masking to do. Really was a bit of a boring day. So the tops of the doors are black, same as the window surrounds will be. So we just get some 1mm tape, 6mm tape, and then cling film on there as well. Just checking we've got our line followed. And yes, we have. Cling filmed up. That is now ready for paint. We'll repeat it on the other door as well just take your time really do take your time make sure you got the backs of them masked as well because you don't want any paint to come through underneath the luggage compartment cover we're going to do inside black i did consider flocking it but looking at the real car i couldn't really see any carpet in there but there was no real definitive pictures and what i was worried about was losing some fit because the luggage compartment cover fits really really well literally clicks in place as you'll see in a little bit so I thought we'll spray it in the UMP primer. It's not too bad to do. We've also sanded smooth our mountain points right in the centre, the white bit. That's where we mounted it for paint in 2K. That has been sanded smooth. So once we paint it black, we shouldn't really see that anymore. And there we go. All infilled. Some 6 mil tape around the edge. Okay, they've all been painted up now. Like I say, ultimate black primer. My colour of choice for window rubbers. Not only that, if you get any overspray over the 2K, because it's an acrylic water-based paint, you can remove it really easy. Whereas if you commit to a lack of paint, you have a bit more of a job getting it off. But there we go. Nice demarcation. No overspray. Job done. 
we can now unmask the rest of the car as well take your time doing this don't be rushing it don't be pulling too hard on the body and there we go now the engine compartment absolute nightmare to do so many different shapes and angles to get again quite a lot of time to do this but worth it in the end because once it's painted it does look very very good if you look at the real car it has a silver lower engine bay color um so that's what we're going to try and replicate now we've got lp11 silver and lp71 champagne gold for all the pictures i've seen it's a silver with a hint of gold in it. So that's what we're going to replicate. So we're going to mix some of these together. We've done it by eye. I have not got any measurements. We've mixed it with the Tamiya Lacquer Thinner. And we've just got a goldy silver color. And we're just going to put on a couple of light coats. It's already painted in silver, so coverage is really quick. Um, and we just want that different color between the Meteor Grey and the engine cover. And I think I've got the color pretty much spot on. It's, it's pretty much what it looks like to my eye and the references. It, it goes from a silver to a silver gold color. And yeah, that's kind of what we got here. And I'm very happy with it. There's also another piece to paint that's over on the left, if you see it. And that is the rear part of the engine bay where the uh, boot lid, well, the engine cover lid sits in. I want to unmask it. You can see the clear definition there between the different body color and the silver of the engine bay. So yeah, happy with that. Nice clean demarcations, no bleed through at all. Really, really came out well. Now I was gonna mask and paint the headlight units and looking at it, I thought, you know what? We're gonna use the Molotov pen. They work really well. We'll carefully get it in there. We're gonna coat down, leave it overnight, come back the next day, pop another one in, and it'll be all good. The headlights are pretty, um, they're good quality, but you can't see through them that well as headlights are normally. So, yeah, this will do the job. We could have spent, you know, a good half hour or so masking all this. But for the sake of time and effort, I think you can get away with this on headlights. It's not that visible, and I was happy doing it. Now, in the engine bay, there's two yellow uh, pull handles. These open a little um, pop-out. What do we call them? I think one's for hydraulic fluid, is it? And the other, I can't remember now, but there's two little pop out um, flaps on the side of the car. They're the words we'll use. And they open them. So we've masked them off and the rest of the car body. And we're going to spray those in yellow as the real car is. And there we go. Sprayed and unmasked. As quick as that. Quick as a flash. This is our luggage cover. Painted the UMP Black Primer. We have a bit of CA glue. And we're going to pop our hinges on now. And attempt to fit this to the car. Now, this was a nerve-wracking part. Because the whole way through, I thought, stuff's not going to fit here. Either the engine cover, the luggage cover, or the doors aren't going to fit. So, yeah. i kind of not been looking forward to this part. But, hmm. I guess we'll see in a minute, won't we? Will they or won't they fit? Hmm. Well... There's only one way to find out, and that's to pop it all in place. So, we'll add a little bit of CA glue underneath where the um, luggage compartment goes that we did the embossing flock in, because that's what holds the actual um, luggage compartment cover in. The compartment's in. We've masked off the front of it so it doesn't open. The hinges at the back are holding it in currently. Then this part locates in those two little lugs there, and then it has two bits at the back that hold the hinges in place so we make sure it's glued in at the back pushed it fully home we're going to hit it with a bit of kicker which i should have prepared earlier don't ever spray this onto your model or onto something you can use a brush or whatever to paint it on it will ruin your paintwork in a heartbeat and then we'll just zap the um CA glue until it's dry and then we'll add a little bit at the front just to hold it all in place and then we can try and open our own well, luggage bay cover. Let's have a look. Will it open? Place your bets. Place your bets. So we give it a few seconds to dry. Give it a little bit of a tap. Make sure nothing falls out. And there we go. We we'll pop the cover. Not too bad at all. Does it close? With a nice satisfying little click. 
it does, but it's popping back up. And what I realized was it was pushing the very front of this down as I was closing it, and that's what holds it shut. See there? So I thought, well, dab a little bit of sea glue in there, get it cut, get it cut, get it set, and that will fix it then. No bother at all. So our perfect pen from Loctite, a little bit of a dollop each side. None of this is visible, so you're fine. Not being as clean and tidy with your sea glue inside. Just be very careful with it. Don't get it on the body or your fingers. It's literally the last thing you want to do. Hit it with the activator. And there we go. Job done. Now, the side window is probably the trickiest part of the glass I had to do. Very, very visible. And, yeah, the only way I could think of gluing it down is to use glue and glaze, which I'm not a big fan of for doing windows with. Um, because I found this to be a bit troublesome in the past. But I knew I could clamp this. I'd already tested it to see if I could clamp the window on. So we put a bit on. We don't go too mad, but we need enough that's going to get purchased on the glass. And what we'll do is we'll put some on here, put the glass in, clamp it, then use a cotton bud to remove any excess that squeezes out the side. And then we can clean it up at a later date. Now, these are probably, like I say, the worst pieces of glass in the kit. They're quite heavily marked. Don't forget, this kit is... 35 years old so it's it's had a hard life it's been around for a while and these parts of the glass are a little bit marked there's not much i could do about it at all um we could have tried and polished it up but my main fear with these parts was breaking them clear parts are always brittle 35 year old clear parts are very brittle so i didn't want to risk it so i could take a bit of a a knock on the chin of a few floors on the side glass and we'll just deal with it later. We'll clean them up. And they looked okay in the end anyway. Right, the grills. We painted these off camera. These have been painted in a Mr. Surf. So we did this. And Mr. Surf's a 1500 black. Because I like the colour. I don't like it as a primer as much. But I like the actual black colour. There they are on the lollipop stick behind. So we popped it in place. So we cut the size using the templates in the kit. Same way we always do it. I've shown this many times in the videos. Hit it with some accelerator, glue it in place, and then we've got two fronts and two rear side vents to do as well. So make sure you get the right parts. Once you're happy, lay it in place. A couple of dabs of CA glue on the top. Hit it with our activator, and job's done. Now you can find links to anything I use in these videos, the glues, the tapes, tools, everything is in the description of this video. So if you go down there, it takes you a big long list on the forum and you can find anything and everything you can there as well. And whilst we're talking about tools, let's see who's watching properly or listening. What is one tool you've bought since you started modeling that you A, couldn't do without and B, was a game changer for the things you were doing? For me, it's probably Tammy Extra Thin because I didn't use that um, at the very beginning. I was about a year in before I found it. And airbrushing. Airbrushing is one of the best things you can do modeling by far. So let me know your comment in the comments down below what yours were. Right, we've got the fans in under the boot lid. We've got the engine cover um, vent on as well. A couple of dabs of CA glue. Pop it in place. Hold it for a second. And there we go. That's done. Now, like I say, be very careful with the CA glue. You don't want to get fingerprints because it will ruin your hard work. And you'll have to spend hours polishing it all out now we've got the headlight lens covers out we've cleaned them up with a sponge sand and a buffer and we're just test fitting them because i thought thought was going to have to glue these in it turns out they are fitting that well they literally push fitted them with a very nice satisfying click so yeah all good there so i was just test fitting and i thought hmm that's gonna fit in there and just gave a little bit of a push held the back because the back is say glued on and a little bit of a push, and yeah, it clicked in place. So we repeated that through the side, and we're all good. Now, engine bay decals. Now, as with the number plates, these decide to fall to bits. The first few decals seem to work well. These ones now are shocking. So this, uh, the left-hand side one's gone down in two places, well, two pieces, and this one's gone into four. So, yeah, there's not much you can do here. So we've got all four pieces. We're going to line them all up, try and get them to look as though they haven't fell to pieces. Like so, and then we can get rid of any excess fluid and hit them with our decal solutions. 
There's a decal that goes just behind the engine. Sorry, I keep calling the engine because it's at the front. The luggage bay cover, and it's a two vent at the top, which I assume feed air to the, the heater cooler system inside the vehicle, the fans. So, yeah, pop that in place. This one on in one piece, luckily. We've got a cocktail stick holding up the engine. Oh, see, I've done it again. The luggage compartment cover. And there we go. Once we're happy with that, you can see at the back it's in there. We set it in place, and we've got our front indicators to go in as well. So a few dabs of blue and glaze. Pop it in place. Push it home, and then grab a moist cotton bud and remove any excess. And there we go. So we're going to leave this here today. Let's go back to me. Let's have a bit of a chat. Okay, and there we go. So, <laughs> part nine done. A lot of work done. Um, there's a few days worth of footage there. I can't remember the last video went up. Uh, but there's about five days worth of footage. Like I say, nine hours in total. Two SD cards full um, of footage. Now, if you're eagle eyed, you'll see the Porsches in there. Because it is complete. I can't release part ten until... Um, we get the number plates because the number plates disintegrated in this video. I've ordered some make your own plates so I can make whatever number plate I want. And there's a couple of options there. These were made from I think a D Reg UK D Reg 85, whoever it was. No, 87 was it? 87 to 92 they were made. So I was thinking of doing like E, an E registration prefix. Now I can either do I've got two number plates I want to do. Um, there's either E959 and then my initials PMB, or I can do E777 PMB, which is the plate on my car. 777, because it's the closest I could get to 77, which is my birth year and lucky number, and obviously PMB for Paul Michael Bratland, my name. So, what should I do? It's going to be those two. People have suggested ISM and UMP. I don't really want to do that. I want to do my initials on the car. Uh, I'm a bit narcissistic like that. So what should it be? Should I do E959 PMB or E777 PMB or even 77 PMB? That's my private plate on my car. Um, I'm kind of going towards a 959, but I don't want it to look a bit tacky on the plate. I don't know. Let me know your thoughts. You vote on that in the chat. Don't forget the question that was earlier as well for those who scroll to the end to look for it. You have to find that in the video. Um, and let me know your thoughts on the plates. But yeah, it's all done. It's over there. We're just waiting for the number of plates. Part 10 will go up as soon as it's done. There's not a lot of work to do. And I'm going to get some final pictures and uh, release it and move it on. But it's looking good. That's all I'm going to say for now. It's over there. Have a look. So there we go. Thanks for watching today. As always, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Give it a thumbs up. Leave a comment down below. I've still got tons of comments to reply to. I need to sit there for a whole day, must probably reply to comments. So I do plan to get there. I do read them all. Trust me, I read and appreciate every single comment you guys out there send me. The support is great, so thank you very much. Make sure you check out the Tesla Scale Model Facebook page and forum, umpretail.com. You can buy a lot of the products I've shown in these videos. Don't forget the list in the description of all the stuff I use in my videos as well. If you want to look for something, you'll probably find it in there. Uh, check out my Paul ISM Facebook page and Paul ISM Instagram account as well. If you've got any comments, questions, you want to answer the two questions I've asked through the uh, the build, let me know in the comments. And uh, I will see you all in part 10, hopefully, on Sunday. I'm hoping we'll play to either come today or tomorrow. It's Friday today. Um, if not, it'll be as and when. They arrive because I don't want to finish it until I've got those because they like the finishing touches. So there we go. Thanks for watching today. I'll catch you all next time. Take care.